Hey, David here again with the Oakville Symphony and Oakville Community Classroom. Welcome back to our fourth installment of the Elements of Music. Before you join me for this one, make sure you've watched our first three, Rhythm, Pitch, and Tone Color, which are linked in the video description below. I'm glad you came by today, because I've got a bit of a problem and I could really use your help. You see, I was just getting ready for a class and I was going to share two of my favorite stories, but I dropped all the illustrations and now they're all mixed up. Can you help me sort them? See if you can tell what the two stories are. I'll give you a big hint. One of the stories is a famous nursery rhyme, and the other one is a song that you've probably heard before. Can you tell what they are? Which nursery rhyme is it? Yes, that's right, it's Humpty Dumpty. Now, what about the song? Which tune is it? Hey, you got it right. That's right, it's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Great job. Now that I've got the two stories straight, can you help me get them all in the right order? What about this way? Do I have it right? Couldn't put Humpty together again. All the king's horses and all the king's men. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. What's that? You don't think that's right? Well, what's wrong with it? It's backwards? Hey, I think you're right. I mean, it wouldn't make sense that Humpty is broken before he even falls down, right? And how would he have fallen? if he wasn't even on the wall in the first place. Okay, what if I flip them all around? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. <coughs> hey, that's great. Thank you so much for your help. Now, what about Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? Is this right? Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. No? Where should the first card go? In the middle? Are you sure? Let's give it a try. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Hey, I think we did it. Great job. Thanks so much for your help. Isn't it interesting how important it is to organize stories correctly? I mean, when Humpty Dumpty was in the wrong order, it didn't even really make sense. And Twinkle Twinkle sure sounded weird, with all that repetition at the end. Musicians call this kind of organizing of musical ideas structure, and it's our fourth element of music, one of the most important but also one of the easiest to understand. The first important thing to understand is that structure is built around repetition. The first, the first important, important, thing important thing to understand, understand is, that is that structure is built, is built around, around repetition. repetition. The first important thing to understand is that structure is built around repetition. And the second important thing to understand is that too much repetition is boring. Musicians use repetition to create structure by creating patterns that become familiar to the listener. But there's an old saying that goes like this, familiarity breeds contempt. That's just an old-fashioned way of saying too much repetition can really start to get annoying. Too much repetition can really start to get annoying. Too much repetition can really start to get annoying. Too much repetition... Too much repetition, too much repetition, too much repetition oops, sorry about that. But you and see what I mean? So musicians use something called variation. And variation is when you take an idea that is similar, in fact it can be almost the same, 
but change up something about it to make it a bit more interesting, to break up the repetition, like this. Hot cross buns, hot cross buns, hot cross buns, hot cross buns. Oh, pretty boring, right? Let's swap out that third bun. Hot cross buns, hot cross buns. One a penny, two a penny, hot cross buns. And with that one small change, a classic was born. Did you notice that the repeated melody hot cross buns was going down in pitch? You did watch our second video all about pitch, didn't you? So to break up the repetition, one a penny, two a penny goes up. Also, the rhythm changes. You did watch our first video about rhythm, didn't you? Hot cross buns is slower using quarter notes and half notes. But one a penny uses eighth notes. Those first two repetitions of hot cross buns means that we recognize that phrase as an important part. It becomes familiar to us. This is called a melodic idea or motif. The change in melody, rhythm, and lyrics, the words of the song, breaks up the repetition by providing something different the third time. And then the final repetition recalls the original familiar motif. It's the complete package and very satisfying. This basic structure is sometimes called A, A, B, A form and is one of the most common classic song structures. There are lots of different kinds of song structures though that work on the same sort of idea. A, B, A, A, B, A, B are both pretty popular but so is A, B, A, B, A. They can get pretty complicated, like A, A, B, A, B, A, or even A, B, A, C, A, B, A. If that seems confusing, don't worry. The important big idea is that musicians who create songs almost always have a plan for the structure of their music, and this structure is based on repetition, variation, and the introduction of new ideas. Music that lacks real structure can sometimes sound random or confusing to us, but a clear structure gives our ears something to hang on to. It makes the experience of listening to music more enjoyable, even though we might not be thinking about the structure or even recognize what form it might be. Let me show you what I mean. We're going to take some songs that you probably know, but we're going to switch the structures all around. See if you can recognize what each song is. Call out the name if you figure it out.
Okay, not bad. But now you probably have a pretty good understanding of what structure is all about. I think everyone agrees that structure is one of the most fundamental parts of music, and you'll find it on just about every list of the musical elements. One reason for this is that music is basically a form of storytelling. And as we learned with Humpty Dumpty, the structure of a story, the order that events happen, is super important. Musicians are kind of like musical authors who tell stories through the use of musical elements. Sometimes musicians tell musical stories that are really obviously about something specific. For example, when a song has lyrics or words that literally describe what's happening, like in Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Sometimes musicians can tell stories that are about something specific, but they don't use any words. Composers can use the different instruments and their tone colors. You did watch our third video all about tone color, didn't you? To represent ideas, emotions, or even actual characters in a story. For example, you might have heard of a piece called Peter and the Wolf. Sergei Prokofiev used the tone colors of the instruments in the symphony orchestra to represent the different animals and characters in the story. He used the violins to represent a young happy boy, Peter. He used the French horns to depict the cunning, hungry wolf. And he used the flute to portray the quick, energetic bird. Listen to this next part and see if you can tell what animal Prokofiev was trying to show with the oboe. If you said elephant, <laughs> then you got it wrong, because it was definitely a duck. The music sounds kind of awkward and goofy, doesn't it? Just like a waddling duck. Music that tells a specific story is called program music because the structure of the music follows a predetermined order or program, which is the development of the story. But sometimes it can be much harder to figure out what a song is about because the composer leaves it up to our own imagination. Listen to the opening of Beethoven's famous Fifth Symphony. Did you hear a story in the music of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony? Pause the video now and share your impressions with each other. What do you think the music is about? Beethoven's Fifth Symphony is something called absolute music. Program music is about a specific story or theme, but absolute music is left to your own imagination. It definitely evokes feelings and emotions, but it's up to the listener to form their own impression of what the music might be about. And the coolest thing is, there's no wrong answer. The listener is free to hear whatever they hear. Generally speaking, absolute music allows for a freer structure, while program music requires the artist to structure their piece around a central story. Both can be very effective ways of structuring music, and as a listener, it can be a lot of fun to try and follow a musical storyline but just as satisfying to form your own opinion as you try to follow the music structure. Here's Oakville Symphony music director Roberto De Clara to tell you about two of his favorite symphonic works, one absolute and one programmatic. My all-time favorite piece of absolute music has to be the second symphony of Johannes Brahms. Four movements, from the majestic opening to its triumphant finale, it is a work of genius. It's a joy for both musicians, the conductor and the audience who has the luck to experience it in the concert hall. My favorite piece of 
Program music, on the other hand, has to be the Moldau by the Bohemian composer Smetna. He traces the river Voltava through the Czech countryside right from its source until it comes into its majestic, triumphant entry into the city of Prague. This is great music, descriptive, and an audience favorite. So, structure is the element that keeps music organized. It helps us recognize and appreciate the themes and motifs being communicated to us, whether it's program music built around a set idea, or absolute music inspired by more general emotions. A song's musical structure uses form to tell stories that we can interpret and enjoy. And that's just about the whole story when it comes to structure. Speaking of stories, if you've been following along with our videos in order, I hope you join us for the last one, the grand finale, where we learn everything, everything there, is there is to, to know. know about dynamics. See ya. Thank you.